This is the second video from section 5.2 on infinite series. In this video, we're going to focus on looking at geometric and telescoping series, which are among the few types of series where we can actually analyze the sequence of partial sums directly. So we'll start with geometric series. So some important terms when we're talking about geometric series are leading term and common ratio. So when we say leading term, all we mean here is the very first number you write down when you start writing down the numbers in this series. So in this case, that's when n equals 1. So you have to pay attention to that number on the bottom of the sigma there. So when n equals 1, my first term is going to be 3 divided by 4 to the first power, also known as 3 fourths. So a here, which is the typical letter that we use for our starting term, is 3 fourths. Now, if we keep writing terms, we get 3 over 4, 3 over 4 squared, 3 over 4 cubed, 3 over 4 to the fourth, and so on. And so the common ratio is what am I multiplying by to get from each number to the next? That's what characterizes a geometric series, is that there's a, uh, a constant number that you're multiplying by to get from each of these terms of the series to the next. So in this case, what you can hopefully tell is that the top of my fraction is staying 3 the whole time, but the bottom of my fraction is getting multiplied by 4 which means my common ratio is 1 fourth. Each term of the series is getting multiplied by 1 fourth to get the next term of the series. And what we know about geometric series is that these geometric series converge if the absolute value of r is less than 1. And it diverges otherwise. It diverges if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1. So in this case, r is 1 fourth, and the absolute value of 1 fourth is 1 fourth, and that's less than 1, so this one is going to converge. And it converges to the formula a divided by 1 minus r. So in this case, I have 3 fourths divided by 1 minus 1 fourth. That's 3 fourths divided by 3 fourths, also known as 1. So this converges to the number 1. Here's another geometric series, a little bit more complicated. First thing to notice is that this series starts at m equals 2, which is certainly allowed. And so when we get that, the top of my fraction is going to be 5, 5 to the 2 minus 1, 5 to the first, which is 5. And on the bottom, I have 3 to the fifth, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and 3 to the fifth is 243. So that is my first term of my series. So my leading term A is 5 divided by 243. But to figure out whether, seri whether or not the series converges, I need to figure out R. So what is happening from each term to the next? Well, I'm going to rewrite these terms with exponential notation to try to help me understand what's going on. So rather than calling this just 5, I'm going to call it 5 to the first. And on the bottom, instead of calling that 243, I'm going to call it 3 to the fifth. So when I go to the next term of this series, which is when m equals 3, the top of my fraction becomes 5 squared, and the bottom of my fraction becomes 3 to the seventh. The next term of my series is 5 cubed, and the bottom of my fraction is 3 to the ninth, 5 to the fourth, divided by 3 to the 11th, and so on. So again, what you're hopefully noticing is that in the top of my fraction, my 5 exponent is going up by 1 each time, but my 3 exponent is going up by 2 each time. And so all that together means that my common ratio is 5 divided by 3 squared, or 5 to the first divided by 3 squared, also known as 5 ninths. And since that's less than 1, it's positive and less than 1, that means that this series converges and again, it converges to a divided by 1 minus r. a is 5 over 243. r is 5 ninths, so 1 minus 5 ninths. And you work all that out and simplify it, you end up with 5 divided by 108. And that's what this series converges to. All right, next up, again, we have one that's written a little bit differently. Because we get that next negative exponent there, I'm going to make this a little bit nicer for myself and rewrite that as a fraction without the negative exponent. So the sum as t goes from 0 to infinity of 1 divided by 2 to the t. So my first term is 1 divided by 2 to the 0. My second term is 1 over 2 to the first, 1 over 2 squared, and so on. So again, taking a look at the tops and the bottoms of those fractions, the top is staying the same, but the bottom is getting multiplied by 2 each time, which means my common ratio is 1 half. And again, 1 half is less than 1, so this will converge. My a here is 1 because 2 to the 0 is 1, and so this converges to a over 1 minus r. That's 1 divided by 1 minus a half. That works out to be 2. 
All right, one last one here. Here it's not written in sigma notation, but we can still identify that this is a geometric series. The nice thing here is that we can see the leading term right there. That's just the very first number that got wrote down. Uh, a is 0.9. And then what's the common ratio? What do I multiply by 0.9 to get 0.09? Well, one of the ways to think about how to figure that out is to think, well, whatever the ratio is, when I multiplied it by 0.9, I got 0.09. And when I multiplied it by 0.09, I got 0.009. So I should be able to solve any of these equations to figure out what R is. And so if I take R and multiply both sides, or divide both sides by 0.9 here, I end up with r being 0.1. And same thing here. If I divide both sides by 0.09, careful with my decimal places, I end up with r equaling 0.1. So that's my common ratio. And again, the absolute value of r is less than 1, which means that this series converges to a divided by 1 minus r, which is 0.9 divided by 1 minus 0.1. That's 0.9 over 0.9, also known as 1. And one of the neat things about this, if you think about this, what I'm really saying here is 0.9 plus 0.09 plus 0.009. That's really just 0.99999 repeating. And so what this helps justify is that those two things are the same. 0.9 repeating, in fact, equals exactly 1. All right, now let's look at a couple other examples of telescoping series. So telescoping series are a little bit more rare, but they show up in places where we can find a simplified formula for the kth partial sum s sub k. Uh, in this case, we can do this because we can use a log rule here and rewrite natural log of n divided by n plus 1 as the natural log of n minus the natural log of n plus 1. So that's a property of logarithms that lets us do that. So what is s sub k here? Well, it's the first term of this series, which is the natural log of 1 minus the natural log of 2, plus the second term of this series, which is the natural log of 2 minus the natural log of 3, plus, 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 we keep going, and eventually we get the kth term of this series, which will be the natural log of k minus the natural log of k plus 1. Now, the idea here is that the natural log of 2 that comes sort of in the second half of my first term is going to cancel out with the natural log of 2 that begins my second term, because this natural log of 2 has a minus sign, and this natural log of 2 is positive. This minus natural log of 3 is going to cancel out with the natural log of 3 that's going to show up in the next term, and so on. And I'm going to get, keep getting canceling, 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 until eventually this natural log of k cancels with the natural log of k that comes in the term before it. And so everything is going to collapse down, and this is one of the reasons why we call it a telescoping series, into the natural log of 1 minus the natural log of k plus 1. And since natural log of 1 is 0, this is just negative natural log of k plus 1. So there's my simplified formula for s of k. And now we want to understand, does this series converge? So to do that, we're going to take the limit as k goes to infinity of s of k using our simplified formula. So the limit as k goes to infinity of negative natural log of k plus 1. But the natural log, if the thing inside the natural log is going to infinity, then the natural log itself is also going to go to infinity. It's going to get there slowly, but it's going to eventually go to infinity. So this limit is actually going to equal negative infinity. And so this series diverges. Because the limit of the sequence of partial sums does not converge to a single number. In fact, in this case, it diverges to infinity. Let's do one more example. This time we've got, again, a telescoping situation. So we're going to look at s sub k. s sub k is going to start with the first term of my series, which is 2 divided by 1 minus 2 divided by 2. The second term is going to be 2 over 2 minus 2 over 3, 2 over 3 minus 2 over 4, and so on. And eventually I'll end up with 2 over k, the kth term here, minus 2 over k plus 1. And again, we get a whole bunch of canceling. This is the hallmark of a telescoping series. This minus 2 over 2 cancels with this, that's supposed to be a plus, cancels with this two, positive 2 over 2. This minus 2 over 3 cancels with this positive 2 over 3. Minus 2 over 4 is going to cancel with the 2 over 4 that comes next. Cancel, 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 cancel. And then this 2 over k is going to cancel with what came before it in the previous parentheses. And so we end up with 2 over 1, also known as 2, minus 2 divided by k plus 1. So that's our simplified formula for the partial sums. And now we want to understand what's going to happen to this formula as k goes to infinity. 
Well, this time we get a fraction that's going to go to zero because the bottom of that fraction is going to infinity. And so we get two minus zero, also known as two. So since that limit, since the limit of the sequence of partial sums converges, we say that the series converges and that the sum of the series is two. So again, we can't actually add up infinitely many terms here, but if we could, we would get a sum that's getting closer and closer and closer to two, the more of these terms that we add. So what we're gonna start learning in the next section is that this technique of directly analyzing the sequence of partial sums doesn't really work very often, but we have a large collection of tools that we can use to apply to different series to nevertheless figure out whether or not they converge.